because we're live on Facebook that you won again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think I've been banned from, I know I've been officially banned from four chapters here in Southern California because I just kept winning, uh, you know, the uh, whatever the raffles and stuff. But, you know, a lot of them were actually fun, you know, question things that you had that skill like. Who is the president of Aria this? And I'm like, um, duh. <laughs> I was gonna think so. Hey, welcome to Escort Tuesdays. We're here on Facebook Live. I'll start um, tagging a few people to get those folks on here. And, but uh, hey, we've got an amazing guest. How you doing, Nari? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you, Charles. How we doing? We have someone special today. Yeah, hey, everybody on our show is special. Well, except for a few, which I'll maybe elaborate <laughs> later. But uh, yeah, Miguel, I want to be from the Austin chapter. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Man, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day in Austin, Texas. Isn't that right? Yeah, Northern New Jersey had their, I think, golf tournament a day or two ago, and uh, it wasn't very warm over there, man. They were wearing ski jackets, basically, and, you know, and uh, golfing. So that wasn't the case, you know. What was it, last month? I can't even remember when that was. Yeah, it was last month. It was April 12th. 21 and i remember that because or no i'm sorry uh march 12th march, right? right yeah yeah because 3 12 and 21 are like really lucky numbers and so we we lucked out oh really okay wow. that's probably why wow someone told me that 3 12 and 21 were some really good uh lucky numbers so i was like perfect yeah well like we know that. all the unlucky numbers that's for sure <laughs> anyway we are in episode 30 was it 37 now nari 37 yes that's right we're we're going around the whole united states and canada uh to you know highlight uh new up-and-coming aria leaders of their chapters and uh so miguel tell us a little bit about yourself um miguel i mean my name is miguel benavides i'm from uh a place called del rio That's right. Rio, Texas, yep. which exists, uh, Del Rio, Texas exists right on the border. I lived in Texas all my life. I moved to Austin for college, um, met my wife here. Um, yeah, started in, uh, you know, started my career here and, and I plan on finishing my career in Austin. So. Oh, yeah. Wow. I lived in Texas, Houston, Texas, uh, my younger years. Um, I remember the weather. It's not it's very humid <laughs> no it's super hot it's super hot out here you got to get used to it uh i mean I, I grew up in 100 degree weather so i live in austin now and things are changing a little bit like today it's kind of rainy so if you guys are getting me like kind of spotty on the internet it's because it's real misty real rainy so um things get nuts but but yeah really hot out here but i I feel like it's good because when I go to other places like Hawaii or like mm -hmm. Mexico, everybody's like, oh, man, don't go in July. It's super hot. It's like 88 degrees. And I'm like, I got this. <laughs> I'm, I'm an equatorial type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, well, you know, as as that uh, super group uh, said, uh, you know, blame it on the rain. Right. Um, what was that du dynamic duo in the 80s? That, uh, Mil was it Millie Vanilli? Vanilli. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's for a whole nother episode. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh my goodness. So, so you... um, yeah, so Austin and you've been there forever. And, uh, you know, I got to visit there, uh, like you said, at the golf tournament. And I just didn't get to see enough of Austin, you know, and I probably always need to stay an extra few days. Uh, we were at a uh, Airbnb that Christine Chow had arranged and we're at this mm -hmm. lake reservoir thing. But the water level is a little low, you know. So, um, anyway, so yeah, we need a bit more rain there, Miguel. Yeah. No, exactly. Wow. Well. So hey, you in case you're joining us on Facebook Live, uh, we've got Miguel here. And who is with us right now? Let's who see. we got? A few comments already going out. Christine Chow. Hey, here he is. Ah, Sunny my Chan girl. From San Francisco himself. <laughs> wow. Anyway, Sonny, I got to hang out with him as well, I think. Yeah, no, he brought his own special golf clubs with him. And what's really funny was it was like really dark at the end, right? And it was actually after the, the dinner and his golf clubs were still sitting out there right near the entrance of the um, <laughs> of the uh, clubhouse. And I'm like, Sonny, your golf clubs are there. He goes, oh, I know, I know. 
And, you know, it's an interesting thing that I was at the airport, right? And usually at the airport, you have these, you know, uh, passengers, Blake and Andrews, uh, you know, get to your plane, it's leaving, you know, or, or um, you know, your, your child is lost. And all I heard throughout the entire time I was there waiting for my flight was um, someone left their brand new iPhone 12 sitting here on this table. Um, it's pink with you know, roses on it. Can you come to this thing? Or someone left a uh, wallet and, uh, you know, uh, over in uh, the seating area of uh, gate 17, please come back. I mean, it was like, it was just a lost and found bonanza where in LA, I mean, they'd be lost and gone, <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, that's, that's the way it is. So it just seems, cool. uh, you know, I don't know. It just seems like a very different culture there in Austin. Mm -hmm. We're a, hey, we're super friendly. I mean, you know, despite what people, I don't know what people, actually I've been a, a uh, you know, people always come and say, man, you guys are so nice. Everybody's so nice out here. And I'm like, I, I guess, yeah. I mean, <laughs> trust me, there are jerks. There are jerks, but you know, overall, I guess we're okay. Yeah, we don't need those folks, you know. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, between I think Texas and Vancouver, which also has a lot of friendly people. But you know what's really funny? I, I tell people when I went to Austin, I'm like, all right, I went to Texas, but I didn't see a single person wearing a cowboy hat or hearing country, mm. country western music in Austin, right? And it's always kind of referred to like the OC Orange County of uh, Texas. It was kind of an interesting uh, thing. <sighs> The, you know, the sad the, the sad thing is the makeup of all major metropolitan areas is 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 you don't really get the cultural nuance. You got to go out to the small towns. You got to go out to Lockhart. You got to go to, you know, further out west to kind of get that. I mean, same thing when when uh, I went to National in Boston. Right. There were. I didn't hear the Boston accent until I, that I hear on television, but it's not in the major, it's not in the major Metro area. You know, you get a, you get more of that kind of universal culture, so to speak. Right. Right. Well, interesting. Wow. That is interesting. So have you always been in real estate or in, I guess the title business? No, I mean, uh, I've been in title for about four and a half years. Prior to that, I was doing, real estate marketing. Prior okay. to that, I was an administrator for six years for a school here in, in Austin. And then prior to that, I was a, I was a television host. So I've kind Ooh. of dump, done a bunch of different crazy things. Right. Who are we to think we're hosting some show? <laughs> hosting the host. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, T Tina Lombard also has her little show too. So, and we got a lot of faces. Do you have like a YouTube channel or something or are you on TikTok or? No, nah, I, you know, so, I mean, God, title, you know, no offense to Chicago title, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm the VP of, I just recently got promoted to VP of sales. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We get a little sporadic. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, well, sorry, we're, we're a little neutral. So they kind of filter what I, what I put out there. Oh, really? So pretty much you just throw it out against the wall and, you know, one or two of them stick. And so, yeah, yeah. You know, and they're, they're like, Hey, uh, try not to, you know, say this and that on social media and try, you know, try to be nice and try to be, so it's like, you know what, it's fine. I'm, you, you, I try not to put too much of my personality out there, but if you meet me face to face, it's different. It's right. Different. Well, I, I saw you, you know, you, you've been, it looks like you've been involved with, you know, the local uh, RE chapter there in Austin, not just for six months, a year, or even two or three years. Looks like you've been around for a little while there. And so how did you discover Aria or did you find Aria? I mean, did you seek it out or did, you know, how did you bump into Aria? I was an interesting story. Uh, I got, like I said, I got recruited from a real estate uh, marketing company to work and be a local title rep. And I did not even know what title insurance was. I mean, really, I was like, <laughs> okay, you guys need me to sell. Yeah. 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 You guys need me. So I know a lot of our <laughs> friends up North, it's, it might be interesting for them because title reps and that whole world, mostly in the Southern regions of the United States, you know, everything's done with a fee attorney up there. It's a little different, but down here, 
Uh, title, anyways, long story short, title insurance, they need a rep to go and try to get new business. So that's what they wanted me right. to do. Right. So the way I met with Aria was they gave me a list of names that nobody had really called on. And they said, hey, here's your lead list. And it's all these, a lot of them were Asian names. And I asked around, I was like, well, what's up with these people? You know, uh, you know, and they're like, <laughs> We don't call, we don't call on, we don't call on them because, and this is a hundred percent true, honest, man, maybe people get offended, but they weren't calling on these um, ethnic names. And I'm not just talking about Asian. I'm talking about Hispanic. I'm talking about because they couldn't pronounce them. They were, they were afraid to insult the people. So I said, all right, give me the list. I will start calling. And I called a lady by the name of Rella Manixica. That was my, Wow. Yeah. That's wow. a mouthful. I even had yeah. to practice that one. I, 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 I called Rella and she kind of brushed me off a bunch of times. Wow, she was the current. Rayla. She, yeah. Rayla shut me down. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, she's, no, like, Miguel, that's funny. she's like, Miguel, I, I know you've been calling me. I appreciate, you know, being consistent, but I'm just a very busy lady. I've got a lot of things on my plate. I'm the president of this real estate, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, all right, cool. Well, and I, I, I basically, I basically kept cold calling her until she let me invited me to an ARIA event. She was, if you want to meet with me, come mm -hmm. to this ARIA event. Nice. And um, I, at that event, I met Christine Chow. And, you know, Aww. I remember Christine was like, Hey, welcome. Uh, please sign here. And do you want a beer? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Christine. I'm I was like, I'm surprised yes. it was a beer. It probably should have been like, you know, a vodka tonic or something. <laughs> Man, <laughs> it started off with beer for sure. And then at that same event, I met an escrow officer by the name of Bam Rembert. And at the time she was with another company. But um, little did I know that that meeting, that day, that event, that happy hour would actually set the stage for my career going forward because wow. I met Rella. I got involved in ARIA. I became on the, I, I got put on the membership. Then they made me VP. Then they tried to get me to be president. But at first I was like, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Who wants um, to be president? It well, I, there was a lot of reasons. It wasn't because I didn't want to, you know, serve. It was. Oh, there's always a lot of good reasons. <laughs> there was a, it's a, that's a whole other sum. <laughs> But we ended up recruiting Bam Rembert over to Chicago title and I became her main rep. Um, obviously Christine was a huge fan. So she kind of guided me along and kind of really told me the importance of this organization. And basically um, got, she, she's the one that fed me the Kool-Aid, the Aria Kool-Aid. Like I drank oh. the Aria Kool-Aid, but inside there was tequila. So like, oh yeah, that's, only that's in Texas, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what kept me. I, whatever I'm drinking, hey, I like hey, it. I want to keep uh, doing Yoda, it. You might want to try some, uh, you know, some uh, yeah. little tequila in there. Maybe we'll spike it next time. Yeah. yeah so says either he's watched our show or he knows all about the Aria Kool Aid, uh, well, Charles. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. I, I watched a couple episodes, but yeah, the Aria Kool Aid that Christine gave me definitely was uh, spiked. Oh wow! Well, there you go. Well. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, Rayla, and, and all those involved, um, you know, because, hey, there's only 42 of you guys at any one time, Miguel, these days. And we did some math last time, right, when um, uh, Nali Boo, uh, Boo was on there. And when you divide 17,000 by 42 or the other way around, um, mm -hmm. it becomes a very small 0.0002%. So thanks for uh, stepping up. And we need guys like you to you know, kick some butt. And, uh, you know, Texas, like California has multiple chapters, you know, it's a big spread out state. So you know, I really appreciate you. And I mean, it's, it's one of the biggest destinations for, I would say even Asian API kind of migration, right? Maybe, you know, from California, Northern California, I don't know. Uh, I think the last thing I checked, sorry, you broke up on that last thing. You were saying the AAPI uh, yeah, community. You know, the migration to, well, Austin, Houston, uh, yeah. you know, San Antonio. It's crazy. Houston's huge. Houston yeah. is huge and continues to be huge. And as people start to spread out, um, you know, uh, uh, Texas has its own culture. But like as these other cultures become involved, you know, people need to be educated. And so 
we're prepared for that. We're, I'm learning as a, as a non-Asian myself. I want to learn about everybody. Uh, you know, Hispanic culture here is dominant in Texas, but we still struggle to find his uh, Spanish speaking escrow officers. So if that's happening with the Hispanic community, can you imagine what's happening with the Vietnamese, the Chinese, oh, yeah. Japanese? So wait, there's Japanese in Texas. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> We're not anywhere anymore. All right. Uh, Miguel froze up on that one. But hey, everyone. Um, Liza Fong, of course, is watching from us in San Francisco. We got Kim Liu from Solano County saying hi, Miguel. And she goes, once you drink the Ario Cooley, you're hooked. And she is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, True. yeah. So, hey, thanks for sharing us your story on that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's always interesting stories and sometimes they get a level on what will we call Nari, that second level of story. The crazy story. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I like that reaction, Miguel. I, you must have a crazy one that you want to share. Well, as you guys know, I, 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 I work for, you know, we do title and escrow, right? So mm -hmm. deals get closed at our offices. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, I hope I don't break up on this story. I feel like every story I tell, I'm getting broken up on. But we had a, 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 a seller that was able to get this house that was an old grandma, old grandma selling her last asset. She actually passed away in the middle of the transaction. So <laughs> that pushed the closing back. We had to get all the heirs involved, yeah. make sure, you know, affidavit of airship. 23 heirs to, to the, to however she set up her last will and Testament. So we actually had, was, was the last name Hughes, Mrs. Hughes? <laughs> I, I can't remember, <laughs> but 23 heirs. I remember walking into the office the day of closing and it was like a party. It was like, nice. I think everybody was getting like $3,000. Like it wasn't even that, but, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to that party. $3,000. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be there. But, um, um, we had like this poster board with like family trees and like uncles and aunts and the aunt had died. So it goes on. Yeah, so it was kind of like a CSI kind of probably onto the cousin. I mean, it yeah. was it, it was so nuts. We had the family tree was everywhere. People were like, "Okay, the uncle's dead," but then the cousin. I mean, it was whatever. But we got the deal closed. Everyone got paid, and we 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 closed it out to the penny. So um, wow. So the person that got the most the was the one that showed up with the twenty three and me kind of uh, you know uh, family tree. You know? <laughs> I mean, at some point. At some point, I, I was like, I might be related. Like, yeah, I, right? I'll check, I mean, I, hey. I'll take a cut. I mean, I think I, I think I might be related to this family. So, no, it was it was nuts. Wow, that that's an interesting nuts. one. Yeah. That's a you know, files are hard to balance, and uh, for twenty three people, and yeah, that's kudos to you guys. Wow. Oh my God, look at these pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, I what pictures i don't see anything what do you guys oh my see? god there you go. look at well, that chest hair yeah wow. that oh, is okay. a sweater that's not a, your hair that's a sweater you're wearing underneath don't worry about it um but hey thank you anything as you know what can happen in escrow nari oh yeah as we heard anything can happen in escrow. yeah and i mean right in the middle of escrow and it it definitely happens so anyway hey your top five miguel was the top martial arts movies and uh you know we've been kind of kind of a common theme going on here right for the last uh few guests right nari yep yeah we had um we actually had a a few black belts uh and uh, some practitioners mm -hmm. actually amongst us 42 presidents or you guys uh, so all right so these are miguel's top five martial arts movies all right let's go number one it is Oh, gee, I kind of gave it away with the poster, huh? Is yeah. this the right one? <laughs> Let's see if it is the right one. Shogun Assassin, it is. Yep, Shogun Assassin, that's exactly. Yep, Shogun Assassin, that's right. All right. Um, I love, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, um, yeah, go ahead. I, I've got something to add to that, too. 
The reason I love this film is I was a big fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. Wu-Tang does a lot of samples from this movie. And I heard a sample and I wanted to find out what that movie was. And then I found out that it was based on a manga called The Lone Wolf and Cub, Cub. which I was like, I'm a literary guy. My mom was an English teacher. So that whole trope has manifested. It's funny, Charles, that you have Yoda in the background because the lone wolf and cub trope was literally the Mandalorian. It was yeah, the Mandalorian. No, right. So, I mean, the movie, the, 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 you know, also if you ever read Cormac McCarthy, the road where the father and the son together, it's the same thing. It's like the dad and the son and they're on a journey and he's trying to avenge, you know, his, his wife getting killed by his old boss Love the movie. It's an instant classic. I, I Anybody should watch it. It's awesome. Yeah, and I, I hate to just stay on this number one one, but uh, NHK Japan had a, a TV miniseries on this, and that was absolutely one of my favorite growing up as a child. Uh, it's called uh, Kozure Okami. Okami means wolf in Japanese. And um, let's see. I will donate $20 to the Aria Foundation if Miguel, you can guess the kid's name in that card. Oh my gosh, I can't. <laughs> I'll up um, at the $50 donation. Let's see if anybody online is any, uh, wondering oh, who that might right be. There. Man, I wish, gosh. All right, well. I wish I knew. Uh, his name is uh, Daigoro. And uh, I will, uh, I'll send a $50 donation to uh, Foundation, regardless on behalf of Escrow Tuesday. So anyway, yeah, it was Daigoro and he had this funky little, uh, you know, hair Top thing knot. going up. Yep. Yeah, no, it was just <laughs> awesome, but I would just love it. And Nari, this guy would roll around in a big wooden, like, um, you know, baby carriage with, you know, and, and machine guns would pop out too. You know, I don't know how they had them back then, but I mean, this guy, it was just crazy. The one of the handles popped out, it was like a you know, dagger sword, uh, but uh, it's just, it's just a, an amazing series. So I'm glad you saw that. All right. Hey, let's go to somebody uh, that you guys might know. I hope this is the right reference to the uh, movie. What's this one? So that's drunken master, but is that the newer drunken master or the original? I have no idea, but uh, tell us about it. So the reason I chose drunken master is because you know, nobody, nobody gives, no, nobody gives Jackie Chan that much respect, but if you go and watch this movie, the, just the acrobatics that are involved are just off the chain. I mean, he was a master in his own right, right. great martial artist. And then I get pumped up, you know, when he starts training to go back and fight like that whole scene where he's like practicing the drunken style. I mean, I kind of emulate my title business the same way. I'm kind of a drunken master in trying to get new uh, escrow business in the door because <laughs> oh, it's I like you were just describing your after hours. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. It's it's kind of the same. Okay, <laughs> you heard it here. All right, Nari, I'll let you guess this one along with that. Uh, I'll come on this. Ooh, that one is what blood sport. Wow, look at that. Well, that was so. What? Oh, did she what guess like it? I missed it. Um, dude, Bloodsport, man. I I was nine, ten years old when this movie came out. Probably wasn't supposed to watch it, but I watched right. it anyway. Yeah, <laughs> oh man, I just you know I just love the whole like secret you know martial arts like illegal kind of deal and like I mean, what's not to like? I mean, you know, he goes in there and. You know, he avenges his buddy that, that you know, got his, what did he get his leg broken or his arm broke? I can't remember. Yeah, he got messed up in a fight or something. Maybe it was cheating or he hit him after the bell or something crazy like that. Yeah, no, it was, and it was like, it, it was mainstream. It was actually, it hit this, it, the actual silver screens in Hollywood, right? And it had been a while before that, that a kind of martial arts movie, of course, it's some Dutch guy named Van John Klaus. Van Damme or a French guy that it actually he was he, he was like the vanilla ice of martial arts film because like you know he was not he was a non-Asian he came through great fighter great actor I mean you can say what you want about about Van Damme these days but man that movie 
I, I, I'll go watch that right now and, and literally get pumped up and get ready to, to get punched. It's been a while yeah. since I saw that one. All right. What is this one? <clears throat> that one is hero. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, I got to tell you, like so many people copied this film or, or a lot of the scenes from this film right in the format and jet lee was just he he was he was rocking on this one man. jet was, lee was hitting his high water mark as far as the mainstream world was concerned yep. he did this film it's kind of got that little twist at the mm. end you know hmm. you remember the twist nari oh that you're like wait a minute you're coming here we're gonna do and then he kind of flips the script i don't want to give it away because i want you guys to watch it okay. but but the whole thing that you got to remember is the scene with the arrows. Do you remember with the arrows? There was like thousands of arrows and he's, he's just getting literally arrows rained upon him. And I think the movie 300 kind of copied right, that as right. an homage. Yeah, That's yeah. where it came from. That's where it came from. Oh, right, That's right. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think the um, lawn darts, that uh, game that you could buy uh, used to be, uh, got banned yeah. because of that movie. <laughs> that's a dangerous game that's a dangerous game <laughs> that's crazy oh. I, now i have no idea if i'm even close to this one you know wikipedia is always right right but um <laughs> your last one here um the last dragon i don't know if that is the appropriate picture but are you now, talking about the animated one or which last dragon I, I, last dragon i'm talking about the bad guy's name is show Nuff, and the good guy's name is bruce leroy Oh, okay. And uh, he's a young African American kid. He's getting beat up and bullied, and and you know, show enough is like. I remember the scene where he's got his arms out, and he's like, "Can you dig it?" You know, oh, and he's wow. straight oh, up, yeah, yeah, uh, warriors. On, yeah, yeah, it's around that time period. Oh, he got, the, dig it. he got that big, he got that big fro, and then Leroy, and then there's that. Um, I can't remember her name, but she was a popular pop R and B star. So she plays the woman that lived the super hot chick in the film. Let's hmm. see, That's super hot chick R and B. Yeah, R and B. And yeah, you know Bruce Leroy, he likes to like fight off showing right? up and win. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, man, I got, see, I don't want to look it up because I feel like a fraud, but trust me, yeah. Last Dragon, great film. All right. Well, here you go. Um, and I uh, can't get enough of this stuff. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen some recently, you know, I remember when, um, what was that uh, big, big one that came out um, with some famous people and people were just like flying through the air for a Crouching while. Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> oh, and, uh, look at you go, I mean, again. I, that one I could watch uh, more than once and still just like, you know, because it's just huge and epic, great acting. And I mean, even the flying around stuff didn't seem stupid. You know how you could get it really fake and dumb, but no, it was just oh, amazing. I thought it was great. And I, was that Ang Lee, the director? Ang Lee, he's I, who's an amazing. I think so. And then it was uh, Michelle Yao, you know, who ended up being a Bond girl after that. I was in there yeah. too. So, yeah, you know, oh, that was great. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, but uh, hey, you're not done yet here, Miguel. So we have mm -hmm. a Screw Tuesday surprise guest segment. And even Nari barely knows about this. So um, I hope you're ready to <laughs> reveal all that there is to reveal. Don't worry, Miguel. It's only the internet where everyone can see it and recall it anytime they want. So here we go. Ready? All right. It is your D and D fetish. Uh oh. oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. How did you find this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got it all covered here. We we have a the crack department, as we would say, um, actually does our research and and uh, gets it out there. So anyway, um, as you know, what is D and D, Nari? Oh my God! Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah, you know that was dun, like dun, dun, dun. was that kind of popular in the eighties or something? I, 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 don't I know. know. Isn't that anyway, like a game? it's a huge thing, and as you could see by these amazing little snippets of photos on here all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to give you this is a quiz and we'll just throw stuff out there and you've got to guess obviously what it is so we're going to start off with and well it's going to be you got to guess the top five most powerful in D. &D. so we'll, we'll throw out some characters here uh there's a few personal favorites of nari on here also so oh perfect <laughs> all right so who is this fine young man or thing 
Um, that is, uh, sh- I believe she is a demon princess. And oh gosh, uh, 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 what's the name start with? What letter? Crap. Maybe Z? Uh, she's fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a- all right. Well, yeah, it's a, a 3.5 that- guy. Um, yeah, Zarel. There it is. There Got you go. it. You had it. Tip of your tongue. And Nari's too, as I noticed. Okay. All right. <laughs> there we go. We're going, we're going from, you know, five to one. I actually put it in the correct order. All right. What is this fine looking specimen here? Oh my gosh. He is a I think he's a Baylor. No? Well, he's the Lord of something. They all kind of are, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He's the demon lord of the the nine hells. Wow, there you go. Of the undead. Close enough, you know. Okay, okay. Orcus, okay. I don't know if you should be proud that you know that or embarrassed. (laughs) All right, so, all right. Number three. Um, Hey, this looks like Stegosaurus, but uh, who knows what it is. That's a Tarrasque. Oh my God! You knew that. This is scary, Nari. <laughs> wow, this the is, most yeah. dreaded creature. Holy mo! I'm just getting goosebumps here. Wow, yeah, the most dreaded. And I didn't even know how to say that, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two. <laughs> number two. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, that is the dragon. Well, so that is the god of all dragons. I can't remember the name. Um, right, right, right. Oh gosh, um, some co- sort of dragon name, but yeah. starts with a T. Tiamat. Wow! Holy hey, crap! Hey. I can't believe he knows this stuff. They call yep. it the final boss, right? So, yep. wow, yep. man! Again, yep. Uh, nice. I'm just uh, amazed. So, uh, and I'm sure everyone here. <laughs> And Facebook Live with Arya's going, what are we doing here? Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're yeah. playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, hey, you know, <laughs> pandemic times, well, not too, we're too busy. All right, so here's the number one. Um, and before I throw the picture out there, any guesses on what the number one uh, most powerful in D&D is? Man, I hope it's a good guy or a good girl. You got all the bad guys out here. So um... <laughs> if you were to ask a child they would answer this. So you almost don't, if you overthink it, you'll kind of miss it. Oh, the most, I mean, shoot, I, man, I've been playing so long. I mean, it would have to be, oh, um, hmm. Well, it, any guesses, Magic. Nari? Magic. He's a, He's he's got to be. You have uh, a servant, and then you have a the dungeon master. Wow! There you go. Of course, it's obvious, well, right? He that is a trick a question because yeah, the dungeon master is really supposed to not. I know metal, but uh, you know they don't really sign. Um, you know, you know, uh, utilize his you know, power to compete agreements or anything when they start these uh, <laughs> shows or you know any kind of uh <laughs> you know, collusion uh, anti-collusion thing so yeah wow yeah, the, look at that um wow. Mario, how do you think he did you my know? gosh you did spectacular that was yeah. amazing good job that's scary you knew that stuff you know <laughs> i don't know how i found it but uh, you're a little was, bit frazzled <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun and um tina max says i only know lord of the rings well, <laughs> hey, if you sat through all three of those movies, I guess you know a lot more than most, right? Uh, yeah, you just told everybody I'm. A, you just proved to everyone I'm a total nerd, Charles. Yeah, well, that is my job. That's uh, yeah, and that is our. What department is it, Nori? That looks this stuff up. Oh yeah, the crack department. Yeah, don't ask me what that means. <laughs> all right, hey, so we have a brand new segment just for you, Miguel. This uh, this episode, and it mm-hmm. is called. Guest uh, shameless plug. All right, look at that. Who we have here to plug, and it is Miguel. Hey, so give us your business pitch, elevator pitch, or whatever you want to call it. All right, here's my business pitch. Pitch the last thing that all of your clients will ever remember is the escrow experience, the closing table. 
why would you try to go with someone that isn't a reputable, strong company that is long lasting and is going to be here for years to come? Fidelity is our parent company. Chicago title is our brand. And we take the escrow and uh, title oh. insurance okay. very seriously. And we want back. So they come back and they, they end up selling with you and hopefully selling with us. Wow. There you go. Straight out of his heart, not his brain. And uh, thank you. But uh, yeah, that was, that was a good one. I like it. All right. Well, Hey, you know, anything in Austin, especially, you know, where the deals have got to go when you've got, uh, you know, title things and stuff. And, and we close commercial title all over the escrow, country. Right? I'm sorry, go ahead. You guys do both title and escrow in Texas, right? Yeah, title and escrow at the same time. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And of course, in Southern California, it's Nari Nguyen for those kind of things with tower escrow and in me for real estate stuff. All right. Hey, um, don't forget to, after you hop off the show, Miguel, to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, we're always going live. Click like Michelle Nguyen from the uh, Ventura County chapters says hello. And even Ivan Choi, Mac Attack. Oh, she's talking about Tina Mac, of course. So. <laughs> Another friendly folk, right? Hey, so what's going on tomorrow, Miguel? What's this all about? Man, so Diversity Fair Housing Summit, I mean, it strikes at the core of why, what ARIA is all about. So we are doing our best to promote that. I've got my bottle already in the mail, so I'm ready for that, you know, nice little experience towards the end. Oh, the but sake, uh, yeah, I got it somewhere yeah. here. I think it's sake or Japanese. I haven't looked at it, but it's, it's some. It's, yeah, it's sake. Oh, I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Oh, but wow. um, I'm also personally ready to learn about the history, ready to kind of just absorb some of this knowledge so I can speak at a higher level to people to understand why ARIA is important. So I'm really excited to attend this. I know we are making a push to get all of our members to sign up. And um, I'm really I'm just really looking forward to to uh, to learning, honestly. Right. And right before this all happens, right before this all happens, I hear you guys got someone teed up that we're kind of familiar with in Southern California, right, Nari? <laughs> yes, we are. And none other than Feng Shui Master Alex Z. I, I mean, he's an interesting cat. That's for sure. I, I tell everybody in Austin, title guy, I'm trying to do all these things. I bring resources to you. I, I try to help you out in your business. I legit brought a master, a, a master to come and teach you the power of feng shui. So what what else do you want, people? What else do you want? Exactly. Yeah. What else do you want? I mean, maybe the dungeon master, but he might be a little yeah. bit. So, you know. I, I mean, dungeon master's right here, but Alex Z's up here. Like he's got it broken down. He's got the diagrams, the keywords. He's got the way you stand, the way you kind of, I mean, uh, so much to learn. I'm, and, and I'm literally. And triangle eyes, you know, he's. he's oh. there, right there. <laughs> yeah. no, no. Do you, do you, you know, though, that, that right? me and, no, I kid you not, me and Brian on, this was like in 2019. I can't remember where we were. But we were hanging out with, uh, you know, uh, Master Z and we go, so, hey, what's going to go on in 2020? And mm -hmm. he just flat out said, oh, 2020 is not going to be good. We're going to have some, you know, crap coming down the pipe. And uh, once you know it, I mean, he's the only guy that actually told us that. And me and Brian yeah. like going, I don't know about this guy, you know, but. I mean, he just hit it right on the mark. So I'm almost mm -hmm. afraid to find out what he's going to predict, you know, coming up though. But no, he's a great guy. And uh, hey, hop on to that and then go straight to the diversity thing. And uh, wow, that'll be a full first day, huh, Miguel? Yep. And this is going to be virtual. So it's open to anybody that wants to jump, jump in. The Austin Board of Realtors is partnering up on that. So just click on it. It's free to join. All right. Hey, Mindy Long from the Orange County chapter of Aria has also joined us. Hey, so upcoming, Miguel, check this line up here. Who do we have here? Know this person? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, let's, let's hear the pronunciation. Come on. Quinn. Yeah, that's right. Quinn Wen from San Antonio. And she uh, was also there when you got installed, right? 
she was there and I was there when she got installed oh, and yeah, she yeah. is a lovely, lovely young lady and she has an, an amazing story. So right, super right. proud of her. I, 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 San Antonio is like my, like my little, like my little cousin. Like I go over there and I, I want to make sure they're doing okay. They threw a wonderful event. Um, we had a great time, karaoke, full blast. It was awesome. All right. Yeah. V Lee did a great job, you know, last year and, uh, no, that's that's awesome. Um, all right, then after that, we've got uh, back to some powerful another men. gentleman. Yeah. So we got John Pan from New York East. Uh, you know, we got to get out there where it's still not quite that warm. Uh, nice. <laughs> give some love over there, and then we're gonna stay on that coast, but go down where it's a little bit warmer. We've got Michelle Joyou from Orlando. Oh, just, uh, okay. Confirmed with us, yeah, Orlando. You know, um, uh, I, is Disney World? It's been open for a while, right, Nari? Yep. It yeah. Has been. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Um, make a visit. Uh, you know, Florida is another, you know, state that has multiple chapters, like Texas and California and stuff. So a lot of Arians, uh, as uh, Elena Oldsman would say. Um, <laughs> all right, that's she's from the East Bay. She coined that term. I asked her permission to use it too. All right, hey. Miguel, um, what is this all about here? Um, oh, kidding. gosh. Uh, well, anyway, thank you, Miguel, uh, for joining us. Hey, we had our version, uh, but it said area. It, it kind of missed like I was down there. But anyway, so, hey, lots of fun. Like, what? They're all masked up and, you know, everyone's in proper, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, attire, right? You know, we maybe a, a few of the masks session. aren't being worn in the right places, but, hey. I that's I got in so choice. much trouble for that picture. Jeez. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Well, you know, now we'll just throw that back out there. But anyway, you're not even in it. How could you be in trouble? Anyway, hey, thanks for joining us, Miguel. Uh, and, uh, you know, just popping on our show without even knowing what the heck is going on. But, uh, man, the, the, I'm still kind of, uh, I've still got like goosebumps from uh, the uh, knowledge that you had in D&D. <laughs> so, anyway. I'm a total nerd. Yeah, exactly. All right. Hey, uh, don't, when we pop off live, don't go anywhere, Miguel. But anyway, um, hey, you uh, Facebook Livers, uh, thank you for joining us. And um, man, that was just a lot of fun, you know. Um, uh, we got to make it out back to Texas, Nari. What do you say? Yeah, we're still live on Facebook, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. We just got to get back to Texas and have a whole lot of fun. So, Anyway, again, uh, escrows and title or whatever in Austin, you know who you got to bring it to, right? And then um, escrows <laughs> over there in title right. in Los Angeles area, Nari, and any real estate, especially commercial in Los Angeles, I got you covered. So anyway, hey, Miguel, again, thanks for, uh, for joining us uh, next week. We're going to have your uh, soul sister from uh, another Mr. You know, up in San Antonio. So all right, everyone on Facebook. Take care and see you guys later. Bye, Nari. Bye, Charles. Thank you all so much.